and oh, Nakamura должен еще сделать, чтобы это выиграть полуфинал. <coughs> That should be fun. So this is an Armageddon game of the semi-finals of the um, uh, Lindoris Abbey Rapid uh, Tournament that's organized by the Chess24. And we're looking at the critical game <coughs> between um, Magnus and Hikaru. So far the match has been drawn 2-2 two -two, and uh, we're looking at the Armageddon game which will decide the winner whether there is draw or not because the draw, in the case of a draw, Black has the draw odds and uh, he will qualify for the finals. And, uh, so, uh, Nakamura needs only draw to qualify for the finals, and um, Magzi Bogzi, which is Magnus Carlsen name, hi Sony, and uh, Magnus needs to win this game with white in order to qualify for the finals, uh, because if Magnus doesn't qualify for the finals, this is gonna be pretty... Um... Ooh, black misses a 5 followed by a 4, because of knight d6, a 5, a 4, right? And white has... Um to do something because black has a strong knight on b4 and on d5 and white needs to come up with some plan probably has to play h3 at some point to make sure to make sure that the um, bishop is alive uh, provoking f6 which is always a good idea uh, creating that weakness on e6 and uh, if black is playing so passively oh he is missing bishop takes d5 followed by cd5 knight f6 followed by queen g4 check hi right, guys high water power and let's see if Magzi finds this move bishop d5, because if pawn takes, followed by knight f6, gf6, bishop f6, queen g3 mate, therefore black will have to give up the pawn on c6 and Magnus will be pawn up. But it didn't happen, white just plays very solid move for queen g3. And still, this is a very unpleasant position for black, because um, again, this bishop on e3, b3 will be looking at this pawn on e6 like forever. The pawn structure with the pawn on a5 and pawn on c6, uh, this has been the cause for the um, uh, dispute among the guys who like play structural chess because um, it's not so clear what can be done with this from pawn formation, right? So naturally white declines uh, queen exchange, he is looking for queen f3 followed by g3 h4, right? Going for that sweet attack on the king side and especially combined with this bishop, if this bishop can come anywhere like near to this diagonal then white would definitely be better so black is preparing for the e5 and it's probably a good time to bring the bishop back just in case to f1 or to d3 right uh, in case black plays e5 and then bishop on g2 will be very strong right so that makes a lot of sense um high water power so um you know i just wanted to stream this uh, armageddon game because i think it's pretty Pretty fun. The the way these guys played so far today it was pretty impressive, right? Nakamura winning the second game was white, absolutely flawless end game, end game performance, followed by equally impressive dynamic um, um, strategic pawn sacrifice performance um, by Magnus in the next game after his loss, so um, which equaled the score, right? So we can see that uh, the computer really likes this position for white because knight on b4 is actually surrounded, right? Has no moves while White has uh, potentially very strong uh, attack. White also has superior pieces. And pawns on a5 and a6 are kind of weaker than um, than the white counterparts. So let's see. Rook cd1 looks pretty normal, right? If rook check, then king g2, nothing special. Uh, black is looking for some, um, for some tactics. I think there are no tactics really. So rook d1 looks normal. Rook e1 check, king g2. If knight e3, um, this is also a decent move, but um, it kind of takes away the knight from the very active square, right? 
So I'm not going to accept all these guys' challenges because I am streaming. And um, knight b6 looks interesting. h4, followed by rook e2 maybe, yeah? Or simple bishop f1. And then... Um, yeah, because black king is a little bit weak, right? The white plays h5 with the idea of h6 here. Uh, and if black is forced to play h6, then, then he'll have huge holes uh, because of that pawn on f6, right? If the pawn was where on f7, let's say black played uh, f7, g6, then that king come to g7 and um, black would be okay. Nakamura playing much faster? Um, I'm not sure. I think he's actually slower. Uh, usually black gets an extra minute when he's playing Armageddon. Um, oh, it's white who gets extra minute, right? So, um, so things are looking pretty good for white, yeah? He grabs a pawn, basically. And if um, knight a4, b3, knight takes e6, um, looks like white has an extra pawn. So um, the question is whether it's enough to win. I don't know. And now, of course, probably a simple knight c6. And, um, oh, but then he has to find this incredible rook g1, knight c4, queen e4, which isn't human. So bishop f7 is very likely with the idea of knight c4. Let's see if he finds that move. Basically, yeah, basically bishop f7 just wins, right? But that is so inhuman. That is so inhuman, guys. Um, that is not a human, guys. And knight c6, queen b2, rook g1 is also not human. So, um, I don't know. Um... Hi Gara, how are you? Hi KMH, um, uh, hi Stony. Uh, is completely winning? Yes, but uh, it's impossible to see. You see instead he doesn't see it and it's now back to equal. It is back to equal and um, yeah. Magnus didn't miss, um, he missed his tactics, right? And this is completely equal now. So Magnus is not gonna win. I don't know, he should have played bishop 7 immediately. And now he is going for this uh, stuff. I guess trying to create something, but um, I don't know. Hmm, interesting. Interesting though, right? What happens if black plays c5, I wonder? What happens if c5, then rook f7? Oh, rook b4 is impossible because of queen e1 check. Oh my god, he missed queen e1 check. Hikaru wins. Boom. Boom, that's it. Magnus is uh, out. He's out, he just blunders the whole rook. He blunders the whole rook, that's what happens. Nope, nice, nice win for Nakamura. Right, he, Carlson basically went from plus 4 to minus uh, 8. <laughs> wow, yeah. Well, he had a he had a chance, come on guys. The Hikaru is playing the best of his chess right now, as I told you guys, right? He's, he's in his best form in his life. And from what I've seen, right, I've seen a lot of his... Uh, games over the years and um, that's what it is after day one he made a huge comeback right because he has nothing to lose right he lost a bunch of games to magnus i think or somebody and um yeah he came back and uh, that single win against magnus was actually huge um he beat him later i think um, was somewhere not, rem not don't remember where he beat him but that was important so magnus basically blunders in this uh he built up a huge advantage, and then in this position, he could have played bishop f7. He was probably worried about queen b2, but then um, he didn't see this line. I mean, it is difficult to see this, right? I mean, knight d8. Knight d8 is beyond human. This is beyond human, guys. This idea of putting the knight like that and bishop on f7, and then knight d6 is just unhu is not human. And uh, it's very difficult to see in a blitz. Of course, if it was a classical game, I have no doubts. The human move would be to play knight c6, but then you have to see this line, which is equally inhuman, right? Queen e4, my god, everything is hanging. There is a huge cross, right? Knight e5, and then you have to see this... Um, knight b4 is still a draw, right? So you have to see knight e5, and uh, the idea is rook b1. This, guys, is the where the computer excels. Um, enable subscribers only mode for this room. Oh, I see. Why? Frappuccino, can you put back the normal people uh, for this room as well? Um, please. Because uh, I'm going to just play everybody now. Uh, a little bit. 
I was planning to do it the lecture today, but um, I don't feel enough energy. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Thanks. Good. Thank you. All right. So everybody, we're playing today. Um, sure. Interesting. I, I have no idea how you do that, but um, all right. Looks interesting. Okay, so three zeros max, uh, no bullets, because I, I really bad at bullets, right? Um, all right, so let's go. So Magnus is out of the tournaments, shocking, but not really shocking to me because I think uh, Naka had it on him. So he beat Magnus for the first time, for the first time in many years, right? He beat Magnus fair and square, one on one. Um, impressive, huge ego boost. No, I mean not ego boost, a psychological boost to huge boost to Hikaru, of course, because um, he is gonna be very happy. I think I played this already before, right? I think I already played this before, and I think it was ninety-two, and then it was um, Bishop H six, I think. Followed by, uh, what was followed by? Queen C1 maybe? I don't know. All right, yes, it is. I'm happy for Hikaru because uh, that means he can finally lay down all those um, ghosts to rest, right? So let's see, knight f4. Small trick. Because black cannot take uh, play bishop g5 because take take knight d5 knight of six check and then I take on c1 right. So um, I like this position for white because in general the knight on b6 is not really that great here. So grab grab. Um, e6 looks very interesting, but let's find out where this um, queen goes. Oh, not sure why I did that, but okay. All right, since I have the opportunity to play c4, I probably should. Then you want to play bishop c5, I guess, so that's the big idea. All right, so if I play e6 and try to do something there, what is this position? Play, he plays double from the final. All right, good for him. So grab, queen c3. Maybe first. Actually, black is doing fine now, so I misplayed this position. I gotta learn how to play this position one of these days. Because black is doing fine now, yeah. I agree. Yeah, definitely misplayed. Alright, so um, let's let us try to look for the equality somewhere here. Easier said than done, of course. The knight is going to e4, so I'll allow you to make me weak pawn. But I need to get that rid of that bishop on b6. Just too powerful. Too powerful to tolerate. Hi guys. Uh, hi Paul. Hi Kathrower. Um, Nakamura style goes against Dubov. Well, I don't know about that, but I think. Uh, hi Andromeda, I just I just got in. Um, basically, it was um, I saw the match today between Magnus and Hikaru, so uh, I I thought the quality of the games was really high, uh, and um, boom, decided to stream a little bit, and now I'm playing everybody because um, I'm pretty happy that uh, Naka kicked his ass to be honest. So Magnus will have. To prove that he is better. Okay, so mm. just b3 maybe. Just b3. It's only white squares, but once I give up my bishop, then I have a knight, and with the knight I don't care about the square of my pawns. All right. Yeah. What's up, guys? Hi, Lasker. Yeah, it, is, it was a really good match, and I'm very happy that uh, Nakamura won.
Yeah. Yeah, but Nak was always very strong in, in such chess, right? Always very strong such chess. All right, so let's grab this tank. Let's um, bring the Kingo, right? Let's bring the Kingo. Well, still kind of... Yeah, still probably not that great that my knight is on the not is on the wrong color, but um, all right. So let's. I need to kick this rook out. King f3. I'm basically. I don't know what you want. Well, you want to play d4 maybe? Yeah. Maybe you do want to play d4 after all. All right, here. Not bad. Okay. Another. Um, примите, пожалуйста, вызов бота. Я не хочу играть с ботами, ребята. Не хочу играть с ботами. Я хочу играть с людьми. Люди, они могут фолловер uh, uh, сделать моего канала, они могут мне как-то помочь, саппортнуть, понимаешь? Uh, вот что он может сделать. Он ничего не может сделать. Он просто бот. No offense, guys. Um, no offense, Mr. QHSD. Um, I have huge respect for the chess programs, but um, bots, uh, there is no reason to play bot. I just, uh, I know that they're stronger, okay? I know they're gonna kick my ass, so what's the point? I don't wanna, don't wanna play bot. So that's the bot thing, right? So let's see, what is going on here? What is going on here? Well, if you give me the bishop, I will grab this bishop, I will grab this, and I'll probably play c5, yeah? Because I need to extend this bishop's influence, sphere of influence, Lee chess master, <laughs> Lee chess master, wow. I've never heard of that. Where did you come up with that? Lee chess master, sounds good actually, yeah? Okay, so let's grab, grab, queen b6. And this is much better. Oh, really? So that's for real? Leech Le chess master, that's for real? Wow. Uh, no, I понимаю, но я просто не хочу играть сейчас ботами. Я извиняюсь. No. Просто не хочу сейчас ботами играть совсем. Uh, так. Sorry. Sorry. So is that it for today, guys? Um, it consists of achieving a sustained rating of 2400 in one more chess variance. Last I heard, however, the title is no longer being awarded as it entails excess work for moderators. Well, I believe it. Well, it's just made one, right? All right, I believe it. Of course. Hi, hi, Games Magic. Hi, how are you? Papa Tactics, what's up, man? Um, and once again, Andromeda, dude, no. hi. I hope you're okay after that um, simul game, man. Because I, I I was waiting for you to ask for the game to be looked at, but um, you probably left already, so. And um, figured you were a little bit upset or something, so. Not sure, man. 
uh, that tile players with computers in online blitz tournaments. That is true. That is true. You're not the only one who was upset. Oh, you and Mark discussed privately. Yeah, I, I have a feeling uh, that uh, that you were better at some point, right? But um, but not sure. I mean, the way I played it is probably doable, but um, it's not the most um, precise way of playing against it. Okay. Bishop f4 instead of queen e2, I see. Okay, that makes sense actually, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So taking away those vital squares from white. Chess beast from Austria. Um 92 f4 plan. I see. Um, maybe. Is it bad to ask questions? No, it's not bad to ask questions, man. It is not bad to ask questions. What we take with this pawn, yeah. Probably can take with this pawn. Well, chess beast from Austria. You see how your bishop on b2 is completely closed, right? And that's why white doesn't really allow black to play d4. And if he does, then white, white plays e3 and tries to get rid of this uh, pawn immediately. Okay. So. So today is a night where I play everybody. Instead of doing the um, lecture, I'm, I'm doing this. Um, all right. Okay. Ooh, ninety four immediately. I think probably D four anyway. Cause I think uh, it was B five then. Ninety four. Wait, ninety four. What is the difference between B five and this? I frankly don't remember. Okay, so if I play this. Looks different somehow. Looks very different. Oh, yeah, yeah, there is this line. Right, I remember now. My god, there is this line. No, you're supposed to play d5, bishop d6, man. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, actually, what is this, f5? No, 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 but wait a second. Knight d4, queen d4, b5. That looked good, yeah? Alright, so I have no idea, guys. Um, d5, bishop d6, a fourth draw. Well, there was the line where white gets two minor pieces for black rook, right? And pawn or something, and it's supposed to be equal. But it's still considered to be slightly better for white. So, um, yeah, but there is such a line. Not sure. Did you still study endgames? Yes, I was doing studies every day. And that's what I recommend to people do them. Because the studies make you stronger. They always did. All right, so two lessons, right? Uh, let's take a quick look after the game about this f5. I'm not sure about that knight d4, if that was correct. So I need to take a, a real quick look at it. Um, wait, but I, I had that queen g7, right? So um, no, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. All right, so knight d6, knight d8, bishop d5. And um, I will accept your resignation at any moment. Okay. Well, you're not gonna play Bishop D6, right? 
So can I remove rook e7 here? Because if he does play bishop d6 and I remove rook e7, he grabs my, my rook. I don't want that to happen. I'm a Sonic. Chocolate? Chocolate? No cheap operation. Yeah, I'm addicted to the white uh, chocolate now, officially. It's not white chocolate. It's not white chocolate? It's white chocolate, a little bit. Hazelnut. Yeah, but it's white, no? No, it's new. Oh, it's not white? No. Ah, I see. And it resists everything but temptation. All right, so I'm being very materialistic here. Do you still play con line with b5 against knight c3? Yes. Do you still think the queen b6, queen c7 stuff is playable? It was playable two years ago. I don't know what's the state of the theory right now, but it should still be playable. Um, it should still be playable. Um, so, okay, so let's take a quick look. Um, sorry, guys. Um, I want to take a quick look at the... Um, what is this, f5? So, knight e4. And uh, suddenly I had a bright idea of checking this line and b5 and then c5. What is this? So because of queen d5, c4, it's winning, but uh, computer likes queen e5. And then bishop e7, then obviously bishop d5 first, right? And then queen g7. So but if queen e7, queen f5, yeah, that's just the queen, right? Um, then... Bishop d5 probably also wins. So d5, queen d5, bishop b7, queen h5, g6. Um, this looks kind of complicated a little bit, but um, yeah, but still we're getting this queen, right? Because it has no long cast link, bishop g7. And if knight e4, then it's only plus 2. But after bishop g5, it's a huge plus, yeah? Because if queen e5, then you have this knight of sixth threat. I see. So h5, queen h4, queen e6, knight e4, and then, of course, you have knight of six anyway. All right, so so f5 was uh, bad. So let's go back for a second. So instead, black usually plays d5 here, and then bishop d6, right? That That is the standard line, and it involves bishop h4, and rook h1, correct, and rook, D, rook e4, followed by the queen d8 check, right? All right, so I was very close, and... Um, right, so this is the official line here, and uh, the rook and two pawns versus two minor pieces. Uh, did I do it wrong? Uh, I think not, right? And then, yeah, so this considered to be slightly better for white. Uh, the, evalu the evaluation really goes down with time, and computer thinks it's very close to equal, but not quite yet. And it's easier to play for white because you have control of the dark squares, right, and a pair of bishops. So, after, although after bishop e6, preventing bishop b3 followed by a5, uh, that pair of bishops is not that uh, strong, right? Um, yes, of all levels, that's for sure. Um, all right, so this is the official uh, line here. And if black wants to play the open Spanish, right, that's uh, usually he goes um, b5 and then d5, and then we are in the Spanish, in the open Spanish territory, right? So the difference is, uh, can you do this first? And the answer is probably not because of rook e1 and, and d5, makes sense. Knight c3, knight c3, dc3, and this does look pretty good for white, yeah? a4 looks kind of important, because you're threatening to take on a8, take on d5. Yeah, well, still a lot of uh, play, right? So it's not so easy. All right, so... Um, so you see, guys, we're looking sometimes at openings. Uh, I hope you learned something as well from these uh, quick uh, lookovers. Okay. And I just sort of refreshing my memory um, on all those lines. Okay. Um, right. So recently I started uh, thinking about this old move. Uh, if you play d3, then I can play h6. Right. Because I want to transpose the game onto this line 
with g6. That's what I want to do. So let's see if I can do that. So it's basically d6 and g6, right? Because I, I really hate all that bishop c4, bishop c5 stuff. Play a Petrov. You want me to play Petrov? Um, now the idea is to grab this bishop, but I cannot grab him because he goes to c2, right? That's the point of c3. That makes sense, but still it's very logical to play this in order to play c5, standard uh, expansion on the queen side. And uh, instead of Brer, where I play bishop e7 and put my bishop back to g7 later, right? I get this now in one move. So that's pretty helpful. Alright, so um, usually the rook goes to e8 here, regardless, right? To put that pressure on e4 pawn, prevent the knight of one sort of, because then you take take on e4 h3, so we're looking, um, Spanish way to play would be a6 and stuff. Oh, I forgot, I usually play queen e8, knight h5, and go for a5 in these positions, right, okay. So, all right, okay, okay, so I misplayed it. All right, so let's play a6 anyway, and we're just gonna develop the bishop to b7 then, and follow these footsteps. Yeah, but usually I play queen e8, and knight h5, and go for that um, uh, king h8 f5. Super strong attack for black. It is very, very tricky line, okay? That's very tricky line, because um, because one wrong move and uh, white is winning, and one wrong move for white, and black is better suddenly, okay? That's why it is tricky line. At least I call it tricky. So... Um, b6 is playable, putting the bishop on b7. Sometimes this knight goes to e8, d6, but probably not here. Here is very tempting to play knight h5, though, right? So let's do that, because knight goes here with a tempo. And you really can't grab this knight because I have a lot of stuff here. But if you do that, I play queen f6. Now the threat is knight h3. So black should be doing okay here, and sometimes... Okay, so this knight goes to d6. If this knight goes from this horrible position because he is restricted, right? So if I get him successfully to, to d6 somewhere, for example, that would be nice. Um, so he wants to take bishop d5, e5 maybe. If I take with the queen, knight goes to e3. Uh, is that the plan? Is that the plan, sir? Um... I don't know, but okay. Let's see it because I um, maybe 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 you okay maybe. I don't know. I have to find. I have. To, I can't calculate it. Yeah, I have to check it. We have to check it live because I don't see the way I lose it. Um. Uh, how many in game Q? Anybody challenge or so you have to sub? No, uh, this is the open challenge for everybody. Okay. Um. Yeah, it stands for a freaking uh, legend, man. Famous fantastic lad. <laughs> yeah, that's a PG-13 version, right? Okay. That's a PG-13 version. All right, so... Um, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? Well, let's play queen e7, bring the queen out of the big danger zone, right? And let's see, and then we bring the knight to e5. Now this knight d4 was probably a mistake, man, probably. Because my knight on e5 is like awesome. It's really badass. It's now a official badass knight, right? Knight d3. It has become an official badass knight. Um, extra pawn always nice. Bring the knight. Maybe I just play b5. Rook takes. And we do have a pawn, so let's just trade stuff. Well, you play fast, you blunder your queen, man. Right? 
But okay, I think black is better in, the, uh, in this position, so let's, for the fairness sake, let's take a look. You see the evaluation here is minus 1.5 because I have extra pawn, right? It's healthy pawn, absolutely. Uh, queen is 6 is the third line. Um, and I basically managed to block your pawn, right? Again, extra pawn and, uh, you know, better position. Maybe not winning, maybe, I don't know. But it looks like, you know, white is in for a lot of trouble, right? Queen b3, of course, I have to be accurate, but only black can play for win. All right, so that was, uh, that was, uh, that was bad. That was okay. So let's see this, uh, this line, right? So castles d4, uh, the computer likes here this structure, which is actually probably correct because your knight is on d2, which is not that great because knight should be on c3. So this is a good position for black, right? I completely missed this. So I played automatic move and uh, computer will always say that structures with d5, which is uh, akin to King's Indian, they're better for white, but you can ignore that safely. And again, taking on d4, playing d5 was stronger. Um, b6, computer likes b5, but I know. There should be a seven. See, it says you missed uh, a4 is okay. Queen a2, queen f6, and I should have taken with the, oh, queen takes is bad, yeah. All right, so pawn takes is okay. So this was good. And this was okay, but I played chicken move, queen e7, and I missed e5. For some reason I thought that you cannot play this. And then this, and then this, okay. Oh, rook d5. Ah, I did not see rook d5. And then knight d2, f3, I see. Okay. Okay, I did not see that. So if I play knight e5, you grab. Oh, I take here first. And then I take here, right? And then rook e7. And black is okay, right? Because my bishop is open finally, and queen goes to e6. All right, so th this is the, um, yeah, so this is cool, right? So we're looking at the structures uh, together. I mean, I, I just wanted to show you like the way I look at the games and the way I look at the structures, uh, how I basically analyze with the computer and stuff, my games, all right? And um, that's what I do, more or less. Although this is a pretty quick version, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, rook d5, that was deep. Yeah, that was deep. As I said, uh, that is inhuman stuff uh, to see. You, like uh, like Magnus today, right? He had plus 3, but in order to see that plus 3, he had to see it, and he didn't see it, right? And that was a sequence of moves which was tough. Really tough. Um, really tough. But he was very close to winning, of course. So, 96-95 then. Because h6 is an important waste of time. Um, rook b1. Nothing bad about that. Um, this case... I should take it with a pawn, I guess. Um, should I take it with a pawn? Let's take it with a pawn. And play knight f3. Actually... Yeah. Queen d2. And bishop d3. So we got really good French, right? Really, really good French. And there's bishop h6 coming now. Anytime. Probably right now. Probably right now. Standard stuff, right? When you have two bishops like that. So queen g6, knight g5. You may survive. Although I really think it's probably winning. All right, let's see. I, I want to see this, all right? I want to see how you defend this. And just rookie one, for example. Because you have no squares here at all, man. And I have basic threat, rookie three, knight d4. All right? In Armageddon situation with white, would you go for the London system? Absolutely. That's the only opening that I know. <laughs> That is the only opening that I know, guys. I mean, for me, it's no-brainer. Uh, 
right? Because I know some lines which can be really sharp there, all right? And that is always helpful. So, um, all right, check. One more check then. Take the new thread of knight h6 has a reason, but um, you don't play like that. Knight h6, king h7, queen e, king, wait, 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 wait. All right, let's just grab this then. All right, so you survive, but I have two extra pawns, and basically this is pretty much winning, right? You know it, I know it. Too many pawns. Just go and grab this pawn. And g3. So I have four extra pawns, right? So if even even I didn't give you a mate, the opening was a success. All right, grab. And of course, you keep this beautiful, beautiful bishop on d5, right? You keep this beauty on d5, and you start to push pawns. Yeah. If you guys, uh, um, if you guys want to learn more about this bishop d3, bishop h6 sack, right? Look at my game against Biliavsky. It was in Linares, I think, or some tournament. And um, yeah, so that. That's a standard stuff, but that's more actually standard in the. Um, here I play knight c6. Uh, that's more standard in the IQP, right? Um, queen pawn isolated structure. That is more standard for those. All right. Whenever people play this line against me, I get really confused because I, I keep forgetting what I have to play here. Correctly, I don't remember my lines. To be honest. To be honest, I don't remember my lines here. Um, so I'm going to play just, I don't know, caveman style probably, just knight of six. Uh, B6. Okay. Ooh. E5. Wow, okay. Ooh, this is interesting. Uh, probably misplayed it already, yeah? Probably already misplayed by me. Hmm. Probably. Okay, if I try this setup. Let's see what happens. Let us see what happens here and bishop f4. Yeah, this is probably not good. Not even probably, it's definitely not good. <laughs> I was trying to get my bishop away from this g5 f6 wave, yeah. Looks absolutely ridiculous, but... Um, Looks absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I look like a total beginner playing this. A total beginner. Oh, knight of six. Crap, what am I doing? What am I doing? Quantium. He's trying to kill me here, guys. This guy is trying to kill me. Commandable, yeah. Who is trying to kill you must be commandable. All right, let's go here. Whoever can kill you must be pretty awesome, All right? F6 first. Okay, bishop takes. King back. Um, is there a way to see the queue of challenges? Uh, there is a whole bunch of them. 
Is that what you wanted to see? Chess is like boxing, in a way, yes. Yeah, but he starts to play really bad, yeah. I mean, he pushed his pawns like, I don't know, like when I'm hungry, I go to the buffet, right? That's, there is such an expression. Like when you're extremely hungry, you start pushing yourself to the buffet. But okay, we got you, man. We got you. Extra queen is too much. Too much material, my friend. Good opening choice, but you got unlucky, my friend. Check, check. All right, so just for the fairness sake, I want to see how bad was my position. It was pretty bad at some point. E5, um, all right, let's see how I should have played against this aggression. See, the computer says B5, wow. What is this B5? Then Queen A5 followed by Knight E4, wow. Tactics, tactics, right? Ooh, b5, my god, then g4, then b4, knight d5, just probably just grab this and play knight d4. Yeah, this looks very good for black. All right, so now I know what to play. We are armed with this um, information. Yeah, right here. Here's the list of my challengers. There are 16 challengers right now. There are 16 challengers right now. So, well, I guess you guys are all warmed up, right? After the uh, watching that fantastic um, semifinals, which, in my opinion, should have been, of course, the finals. But, yeah. But you can dream, right? I mean, these semifinals were really worthy of the finals, to be honest. Really. Because these are huge fighters, of course. Huge fighters. And black is doing fine now. I think sometimes nice 67 e5 is annoying for whites. Uh, except to see where I am in the queue. Um... Yes, 96, 90, 5 for aggressive players, right, that, that is true. G6, Bishop, G7. Right, there, there are a lot of lines, guys. Um, a lot of guys, uh, I mean, a lot of guys, well, a lot of guys is also true, but a lot of lines. There are a lot of lines uh, that you can play. But basically, that happens in any opening, right? You can find the line which suits your style, suits your needs, and play it. Ooh, wow, thank you so much, Mr. J. Faragut. Ooh, we got a new new supporter in the channel, guys. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now we got two finals, right. You got great stuff coming. All right, so what is going on with this position? What is going on? So basically, I just centralize, right? Centralize. Oh, I remember what I do. I usually put the pawn on h5 and go for this h4 thing. And if white plays h4, then my knight can get the square in g4. At the same time, white gets the square as well. So that is the um, that is a small problem there. All right, fine. So let's play e4. Um, let's just play e4 and put the knight on e5 where he belongs, right? Closing this bishop, opening our bishop and getting this square on d3 for our knights. All right, so that's probably the easiest way to play this position. So, and that that is what we are going to do then. Sometimes you, re you can really just trade this guy, but it depends. Right now, all you want to do is put this knight on e5, right? That's basically all you want to do. 
so and then you're ready right then you can go for this g5 you can go for a lot of that stuff oh white willingly trace the queen one trace his bishop but i don't trade the queen man because i need the queen for the attack where's this bishop go i like this bishop on f7 so he can look at i look at the square on c4 right and now this means the second knight can go to e5 and um and this looks pretty good so the second knight goes to e5 and the threat is g5 knight d3 or sometimes uh, that's the reason bishop goes to f7 like right like in a true dice right after g5 the bishop can go to a um, h5 oh my move All right h6 and there is no defense against g5 i'm gonna play it anyway because i'm stronger on the king side guys i'm stronger here right because of this uh, pawn grab space grab because of the strong bishop and now you also open the h file for me which is thankful which means i can play bishop f6 king g7 rook h8 right and that's what i'm gonna do yes dubov of course is the is the great fighter so it's gonna be exciting uh, finals as well uh, a tempo actually slightly better for white like the computer says uh, yes um, but um you know the, all these positions they have to be analyzed deeply because um you can find a lot of lines where the computer thinks he is much better only then he lowers his evaluation way down right like way down so you can't trust um computer evaluation the king's indian that's one of the openings where you're on your own you cannot trust computer I'm telling it to you because I know, right? So simple rook h6, rook h8, simple double trouble, right? No, no need to play knight d3, give the opportunity because your knight is better than the rook, okay? In this structure, your knight is much better than the rook. So you want to keep that knight. Okay. Sergei Voron chess means Russian player. This chicken play by white, but everything is loud against um, chicken play by white. Well, you know, everybody trying his best, I think, right? I encourage people to play active chess against me because uh, that's the only way you can learn, right? But how many times have you noticed that when you play against the computer, right? You play the computer and suddenly you feel like, ooh. I want to play safe. I want to play safe chess, right? I mean, I I did that too, right? So let's raise the hand. Let's be fair. All right, so let's trade this guy. Because I didn't like that guy potentially going to b5. And thank you for the knight. I mean, do you really think I give you the spawn for free? Okay. Um, bishop c5 looks normal. So let's put the bishop here. Bishop b6. All right, finally. Knight f6. So extra piece, right? Nice. Extra piece, some, probably some compensation. Probably. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah, c4, b5 is coming, maybe. All right, so white does have certain degree of compensation. I will admit that. I'll be the first to admit that. And let's play 97. Hmm. Okay. Hold on a second. Um, IGC is just dying of my file. How deep I go? Yes, Che Guevara was a very controversial character. 
So this cop doesn't mean that I adore this guy, just a good cop, man, as I mentioned before. Yeah, but there are certainly people who think very highly of this man. But to me it's just a cop, right? G3. Alright, so what is going on? Suddenly I feel like I'm getting killed here, but no, it's not true. I am in full control. I am in full control. And there is a swift counterattack, right? In progress. A very swift counterattack. Check. Okay. The bishops, they went back. Um, my opening preparation. If you look at my some of my videos on YouTube, I specifically, when I did some London series, right? I specifically opened the file on my chess base so you guys can see the kind of analysis that I have on that line, right? And that was only just one minor line. I have uh, such lines, like I have at least a uh, couple of hundreds of uh, chest base analysis with these, uh, with the lines go much deeper. Okay. That is pretty normal. So what do I do here? My God, what do I do here? I don't remember. I think G5. Wait, G5 was, a, was, the, was the other move. Yeah. Ugh, what do I play here? Hmm, I don't remember. I think it's King H8. Because the Queen T5 checks coming. So King H8 is kind of useful move. Play chess has been in decline for a long time. For a long time. Do you have any offer to buy my London file? Of course not. Because my files... You know, the thing about chess is you need to keep them updated constantly, right? Constant update. You have to do that. So a lot of my files are simply outdated now. That is... That is true. And that helps me bring my knight back from the dead. This knight goes to g6, of course. Means this guy goes to f4. This means I play most likely b6 here. And I like my position now. Knight goes to d4. And the threat is take, take, knight c2, right? So I think this is pretty good deal for King's Indian for black. I think I did uh, I did okay. Good got a good position, right? More or less. So this small tricks like knight h3, knight f3, we're not gonna do because your knights are far more important than white's rook. Uh, you have any offer? Right. So that was uh, CM high, CM high, high. Why do you th why are you thinking Karakhan is too passive but recommends Slav? Where have you heard me recommend Slav? You have to know Slav. Slav is tough, man. It's really tough. One of the toughest openings. So let's grab this thing. Put the bishop on f5. And, and now white opened my bishop, which I'm pretty happy about. I really want to play f3. So you gotta do something fast. You gotta do something fast, man. Slav is good. But Chibanenko is uh, difficult. Chibanenko is difficult to play. You need a lot of analysis there. Again, I have huge analysis on Chibanenko. Um, Huge analysis, huge files. 
Yeah, I, I think I found basically, um, if not equality, then um, only slight advantage for white. You know, and almost, uh, but you allow me to take the knight now, man. And basically, Rajabov would just basically play d3 and open this bishop and check and something, right? And I think that's a fair fair statement, actually. Let's let's do that. Yeah. Open the bishop. I mean, f3 was probably winning as well, but d3 is probably faster. So check. And queen f2 looks good, right? So bishop d3 is forced, and rook g8. Simple, don't need even f3. Um, you stop my f3. Right. What do you think about book Bologan wrote about Shabanenko? I haven't checked that. Um, learning opening theory, basically, uh, since the very start, you have to learn both end games and theory. You have to learn both. Тоншка моя. А может мне ножнички дать? А то у меня что-то здесь это разболелось. Хорошо, спасибо, Лепим. Спасибо, мое солнышко. Okay, then I play d5, I think. And just reversed, I guess. Uh -huh. I see what I'm And I just play this line. Sorry. But I. The sign of the nerves, of the nerves, right? The sign. The first sign that your nerves are getting better of you is that this nail thing, right? I, I've, I've been doing this since I was a kid. Like, you know, grow doing this with my nails so so whenever I play chess I notice myself doing this a lot probably you guys also have some little trick right that um, you do during your chess games you don't notice and um, so gotta gotta watch out for those habits right so b6 do you know better English or Ruski well Russian is of course much not much but it's better yeah because my original language so Russian is but uh, English is I'm bilingual right I consider myself bilingual because there was a time when I was actually uh, found myself a lot thinking in English not in Russian right so bilingual is good plays in this way he's a can play but also plays English with the setup with e3 and a3 when he can Всем привет, всем привет. Did somebody just raid me from the Russian channel? I see a lot of Russians here today. In poker is called tell us a lot about your thinking. That's true. Yeah, I heard about that. I heard about that, man. Thanks for pointing that out. Do you speak two languages? Yes. Um, bilingual means uh, speaking two languages, right? So that's true. Oh, you're just blundering me. Thank you. You didn't play so badly, but then you had to play queen e2, man. That's a rookie one. And take on d5 and play this structure. That's If, you, if you're playing kid structure, that's what you should have done, right? Because that's a kid structure. And um, and your knight should never be on b3. Remember that. The knight should be on c4, always. So take on d5, play knight c4. That's how kid is being played. All right? Just for the future reference. Knight on b3 is suck. I guarantee you. Okay, knight d2, knight bishop b5, sort of. So extra piece, completely winning position. I am Chess Ahedrez 2020, challenges you. A provisional rating player. Cool. I love challenges. I'm still very competitive, yeah? Speaking Tatar? No, unfortunately not. Because my dad didn't really speak Tatar. He was speaking too much Russian. He didn't know Tatar much. He, he, he knew a couple of words. Bilingual people, how life is when you never platonic friends with the other language? <laughs> what? <laughs> platonic friends with another language? My god. Five. Card. Dude, you're so romantic, man. You're probably very popular with women. 
admit it. Yeah. Hi, Darth Vader. I mean, such po poetry. That's awesome, man. Okay. But uh, bilingual language. Uh, it's okay. You know, you know, in Europe, the kids actually study at least three, four languages in, school, in high school, right? It's only in the U.S. that we have uh, one language in high school, I think, and another language in um, college. But that's not a given. That is not a given. Usually, people just take the foreign language uh, requirement, right, just to make sure they get those credits. And they stay happy. And they stay happy. Okay, so I actually played this line for white some time ago. Yeah, I actually had a game with White against um, Elvis, I think, at some point. Cara, hi in Spanish, is hola. Yes, that I know. I I, I know I know very little of Spanish because, um, but very very little, just a few words because um, I love um, Spanish culture and. Um, I don't know. For some reason Spanish to me is more friendly than Italian. Because whenever I hear Italian, you get I get that image of Godfather, a lot of mafia guys, right? So I get scared. And um, but then I hear that stuff, and that looks cool. Spanish, because I don't think they have uh, mafia in Spain. In Spain, right? <coughs> Maybe they do, but I don't know. Uh, Простой бред. Вели, что за бред ты несешь? Чего? Как за донить текста? Чё? Чей All right, so we have a um, couple of Russians here. They they trying to figure out uh, their way around my channel. You guys are welcome into the channel. Одушевленный человек, ясно. How do you assess the amount of count difference? I don't see your games with 96. I don't like playing 96 because 96 allows the English attack sort of system with bishop e3, f3, queen d2, g4. And I'm not a big fan when people attack my king, right? Про второй канал для русскоязычных? Нет. Шипов ведет русскоязычные каналы. Come on, guys. Шипов он прекрасный комментатор на русских каналах. Um, I'm, I'm telling these guys that uh, there is a great Russian commentator, Shipov. He is a legend, in fact. He does great stuff. Uh, absolutely fantastic stuff. So, and because I'm an American, yeah, so the Americanets, yeah. Um, yeah, so the Americanets, yolki palki. Поэтому я веду стрим на английском. So I do the English. Uh, Ace? С кем? Alright, I'm getting a lot of confused here. People talking about women or openings. I'm very confused. Alright, probably both. Okay. Wasn't she of Dubov's coach? Ah! That I don't know, guys. That I don't know. That is a mystery. That you should actually ask Dubov, right? Or you can speak with the um, guys who know Dubov, right? That I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people who know Dubov. Um, achieved more in chess than Sergei Yurovich. There is nothing... Uh, this is not talking about achieving. This is talking about the quality of the commentator and the chess coach, right? And Shipov is doing a great job, in my opinion. So he is doing a great job commentating in Russian. For all the people who don't know English, right? Because his streams are basically only in Russian, I think. All right, so it's time to grab the pawn, right? The time has come to grab your pawns and attack your king. Boom. All right, Bazi, not bad. Uh, why is he refusing to play the killing bishop d4? Um, 
Oh, спасибо, солнышко. We, guys, we got some more chocolates. You guys see it? A lot of chocolate. That's not a lot of chocolate, but uh, I'm getting only a certain dosage allowance from my wife. All right, she's the main handle of all my food intake, right? But you know, when I started to eat less, I started to feel much better than before. Before that, you know how heavy I was? I was uh, around 240 pounds, right, when I lived in the States. But now that I live in Russia, you know, uh, I weigh a lot less. And thanks to my watchful eye uh, for my wife. Still grabbing pawns, yes. Uh, why Vera didn't adopt London? She, she actually played some London um, when she came to the US. If you look at some games from uh, 2015, she played in the Marshall Club and she played um, a lot of tournaments with me. So she played a lot of London. But uh, London is for the patient people. And my wife is a huge attacking player, right? She is a very aggressive player. She is, she, she, you're patient? Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I know. <laughs> now I know that you're very patient. Okay. So, um... All right, so let's grab this and let's play g3. That's how you usually play this. And you develop your bishop to g2 and rook to c1. That's the reason why I play king e2 instead of king d1. And white is better. Yeah. Because of this triple pawns, which will become soon double pawns. Because I'm going to eat this pawn on c4. Right. Um, so I was 240 pounds and I'm only um, 5'11 inches, right? Which is basically 179 or some 78 centimeters. Um, how long have you been married? I've been married now for almost two years. This, uh, the, the, this year it will be two years. Adrian Michalczyshin is a good coach. I have no idea. I don't know Michalczyshin that well. Hmm. Good evening. Okay, so we have extra pawn, right? We do. It's kind of not that great, but potentially, potentially is good because black has um, really bad pawns there, right? Especially in the rook end game. If you know your rook end games, these pawns are considered to be not that great. Okay. Hmm. E4, E5 is very tempting. But I hate to give squares. Alright, so let's attack this pawn. Rook b6 has to be played. Okay. Bishop goes to f3. So, ooh, now we got a weakness. Okay. Alright, rook back. Make sure you keep that pressure. On the C file, but now black is doesn't have that A6 uh, thing anymore. Mm, E4, E5 is probably not that great. I don't know. Just play Rook C4, I guess. Then sort of double Rooks here sometimes. Play Rook H5. Remind the opponent that there are two uh, flanks on board hmm. b4 yeah fix the pawn on c6 in case black wants to play c5 now he cannot do that a3 be very patient very very patient now this pawn formation you see it's it's a confirmation actually all right so you have a lot of pawns now now look comes so gotta be careful make sure don't blunder anything <coughs> so rook g6 
in here. Protect. Put the bishop on f3. Goes to g4. Yeah. Okay. Attack the knight maybe. And all right. Hold on a second. I'm getting confused here a little bit. Um, can I do this maybe? Because hmm. I like to grab a lot of pawns. Sorry about that. So, um, are you friends with Varjan Hakobian? Well, we're colleagues, right? We are on good terms, right? And uh, we played uh, together so many games, uh, so many times, right? We've been uh, teammates on the Olympic team since 2006 and played so many games in the US Championship. Exactly, exactly, Gigan. You, you got it, man. So Slav is for the patient players. So Nimzo Slav is basically for the positional strategic players. And Kid Dutch Benoni is basically for the dynamic type of play. Alright. Do you like Game of Thrones? Um I never read the book, I never watched the show. Because unfortunately I play a lot of games. Yeah. I like to play a lot of old games. So, um, gaming is my um, weakness, sometimes my strength, but it's never, it's always been with me. That's why I'm not number one in chess, but that's a different story. Alright, so h3, make sure there's no knight h5, knight e2. Grab, grab. Yep. But the bishop on b7 is kind of bad, so um, we want to play knight e5 here, maybe. Traditionally, I just grab this bishop and play rook e1, maybe queen e2. Offering me a draw. You got balls, man. So when I, whenever I leave my rook on f1 and I don't play rook e1, then I go for the f4 rook e1 plan. And then straightforward attack. A very straightforward attack on the king side. That's what I do. Um, Dragon of the Sicilian. Want to play more solid, not easy to adopt. Uh, that is true. So in this case, you have to play queen h5, I guess. Force that f5 in. I'm thinking about g4, you yeah? know? Then knight of 6, knight of 4. So, alright. Grab. Mm. Okay, okay. Probably keep the queens on board. Probably. Actually, let's grab this, and I want to play bishop b5. I just want to take this knight, put my knight on e5, and you get to your London knight. Probably not enough to win, but black will be suffering forever. Mm. Hi guys, hi Sir Zaki. Alright. Yeah, because I don't want La Black to get his knight to d6 and e4, which is not a big deal, to be honest, because you can capture knight on e4. But, dude, you should have played king f6 or something, because I just grabbed this and I give you a check and um, you lose the bishop, man. What are you doing? Smyslov managed to sneak in his second game, I think, today. 
Mm. All right, so let's check your Pierce uh, knowledge. Let's check how your Pierce is doing. Okay. F4, okay. Then I have to play a knight f6, right? A book from you about the London system. No, you don't need a book from me. Um, there is a book from Sedlak, which is pretty good. Pretty good book. So, queen a5, I think, right? Oh, yeah, the kids play this line against me all the time. Yeah, kids play this. So, I probably... I just do this now. These days, I just play this. Tuck my king away from all the potential action. And that queen on t4 is gonna... Is gonna suffer. Terrible stuff. Knight c6, queen a4 maybe. I don't know, let's see it. Well, black literally has compensation here. Come on, he must, right? He completes his development, right? Uh, this f4 is kind of weak, uh, then... I don't know, black should be good here. I believe in black position here. Of course, maybe I could be completely wrong, but um, to me it looks this way. So what is this? What is this position? Um, I guess d5, knight d5, right? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe it's not as simple as I thought it was, yeah? d5, just knight d5. Can I get to anything? Anywhere? Hmm. I don't see it. White is extremely solid, yeah? Hmm, interesting. I don't know, so maybe I made a mistake somewhere. Maybe. All right, so let's just play bishop g4. Let's go for positional play. And rook d8. Just centralize your rooks, remember how I taught you guys? Whenever you don't know what to do, centralize your rooks and uh, open the position. Because white is still stuck sort of on the queen side. Chess is hard. It's always been very hard. It's not for the... It's not for the easy reading, for sure. Okay. Hmm. So, d5, e5, that's your plan, I guess. So, let's put the... Um, but if I play bishop c8, then h3, maybe. Who knows? Okay. Ah, bad move. Bad move. Bad move, of course. Yeah. Alright, so I have no compensation for the pawn whatsoever, unfortunately. No compensation for the pawn. Alright, so let's see if I can just wing it. Wing it. Hmm. I got outplayed, but not this time. Not this time, man. Not this time, dude.
Yeah, I'm screwing things up big time. Screwing things up big time. Okay, you're fast. I'll give you that. I'll give you that, Mr. Smyslov. I'll give you that. Yep. Yeah. I mean, anybody can play me, anybody can flag me. It's okay. That's, that's life. Um, it's getting better in time scramble. Not really. Not really. But thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Yenish line. I call this the Fiendish line. <laughs> this bloody tricky line uh, just just equalize just equalize and play this mm. Mm. yeah c4 is coming or something all right beef oh shit oh, my god my god that's what happens when you play a move that you haven't been planning on playing. <laughs> That's what happens. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good job. B5, my god, why did it get cum? <laughs> I have no idea where that move came from. I was unexpected flight of mind. Huge gift for my opponent. Merry Christmas, man. Then should I say Happy New Year, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Okay. All right, so C8. We wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Right? That's how it goes. He is more gotta getting triggered ski. Triggered ski. I don't know about triggered ski. But I'm thinking about this. I kind of like this move. Feels a little bit... Yeah, I'm just having fun, guys. Come on, I'm not playing competitive chess here. I'm playing for you, guys. I'm playing for you. Mm, grab. Playing basically for you people. So how is White going to improve this position? I'm very curious. Probably he can, yeah, but um, how? How will he do that? King b3, maybe. So rook c6. Okay. Uh, 
how are you going to improve your position? That is one question that I would like to know the answer to. All right, check. Rook back. Check. Offers me a draw. See, this guy is smart because he's lower in time, right? So he looking for a draw. Very smart, man. I like that. I like that. Since I blundered, you get a draw. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because he was lower in time, right? Good timing instinct. Good timing. So because I'm blundering so much, I'm gonna focus now a little bit more. I'm gonna focus. Hmm. Yeah, bishop c4 is one of my favorite lines. And my wife came up with this bishop g5 plan, which I'm very proud. Smirin, he played many kid and uh, Khan. Yes, he did. We actually had a fantastic match with Smirin in World Cup 2005. Fantastic match. A lot of Khan. A lot of Nidorf. I kept losing with Whites in Nidorf. And I kept uh, <laughs> rebounding with Black in Khan. Yeah. Um, do chess players go to the disco during the tournaments back in the day? That's a serious question. Maybe. Who knows? Who wants to know? Okay, we know who wants to know, but um, a disco. Yeah. I'll even raise my hand and say I went to disco during the tournaments. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? It's not criminal. But world champions don't do that. They don't go to the disco during the tournaments. Right? Okay. And that's why I like the structure because I can give you this. Um, yeah, queen d2. Make sure you don't get h6 in. You should have probably played h6 first before you castle. Because now bishop on g5 is kind of be a huge, annoying bishop that you cannot get rid of. You're a party animal. Animal. That's very good. All right, so let's immediately trade this bishop then. Because your bishop is one really bad bad for me piece, which I need to trade. So a4. Now you guys see the structure, right? These pawns make sure there are no pawn breaks. It fixes the pawn. Missel, man, are you sure you're a chess player? Dude, you play chess? Are you, because you don't sound like a normal chess player, man. No, no, come on. My God, I think my neighbors are shouting again. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. Christ, poor, poor kids. Yeah. By the way, what do you guys do when there is the situation uh, which you think might escalate into something you don't want to see? What do you do in the U.S.? I think. Yeah, because uh, things are a little bit different here. Doesn't need to party. That depends, man. We love a good party, right? Who doesn't love a good party? So, um, all right, so let's put this rook on e6. It just looks very nice there, right? So the serious question is, how do I break through black defenses here? And there is no short answer to that. 
Um, however, there is this knight d5 move, which you have allowed for me to play. Because the rook cannot go anywhere, because the rooks are stuck. And I can play this, right? And if you do that, then I will grab this one. And this looks pretty good for me. Mm -hmm. Well, just 95, I guess. 95, queen f2. Wait, I need to attack this knight in a way that you cannot protect this guy, yeah? So how do I do that? Queen g3, no, I don't. I don't want to give you the spawn. c3, knight b3, oh, knight c2, wait. Wait, 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 right, there is that knight c2, okay. e6, all right, makes sense. So let's play knight d3 first. Whoa. All right. So probably winning for white at the end, but um, we're right, it's an American pastime. You start shooting, shooting, my god, are you in, in the south? Do you really want to know who is stronger, Nakamura or Fabiano? Nakamura is much stronger than the... Okay, not much stronger, but he is stronger. Blitz and Rapids is where Nakamura shines, uh, Karana shines in the um, classical chess format, right? Interactive chess, thank you for the game, man. All right, the Dutch defense where I go h3 and g4. That's my personal favorite against the Dutch for the fun part. That's the fun part Dutch. This is what I do for fun. I am a businessman, so taking risk, but in order to play London's Angels of God, I need to be patient. Yes, patience is a virtue sometimes. Sometimes you have to protest? Yeah. Against what? And stop tolerating. And stop what? Tolerating. And stop tolerating? Yeah. Tolerating what? Bullshit? Oh, all right. So we are talking to my wife, who is a future psychology expert. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't deny it. We know you are. Future, huge expert. Um. All right. So this should be good for me. How is it good for me? This should be really good for me. But how? I don't know. Um, knight g5 looks good, right? It's the first knee-jerk reaction. So it gotta be good. Okay, I have a plan, guys. I have a plan. I do have a plan. Oh, this was bad. You should play queen e7, man, because um, my plan was to play rook h7 and queen g6, right? So... Uh, yeah, I should have played queen e7, that's how you protect, and I, I couldn't decide whether to play rook h7, but then rook h7, queen g6, rook f7, bishop e2, knight c6, bishop h5, knight d8, and you protect stuff, right? So that was a big problem. So, grab, um, check, and check. What am I doing? I'm not torturing you, man. I'm just trying to figure out the cleanest way to victory, okay? That doesn't... That was not meant to be a torture. You know how people do that? Two checks and then repeat position two, two, two times and they go for the winning move, right? That is not me. I don't do that. That was a famous Russian thing. Here. I admitted it. For a famous Russian thing. Check. Check and mate. Okay, I see it finally. I finally see it. Boom. All right. Many gotta jokes as your name is gotta for sure. I'll tell you guys a story. When I first came to the U.S. 
And um, we met this uh, ex-mafia Russian guy on Bright Ambition Little Russia. Because my dad, like, he knows how to talk to these guys. He spent his time in prison. He knew mafia guys. He knew fighting guys. You know, he knew he knew street life basically. So he knew, he knew everybody, right? And he knew how to do, how to talk to these guys. So we met this guy. Uh, that guy brought a bunch of his friends. They had a lot of drinks together, and they became fast friends, all right? And um, this guy, he was like in the U.S. for twenty something years. And one day, he said, "Hey, do you want? Uh, do you want? If you guys want, I can be your manager, right?" Then my dad says, "Sure." And uh, this guy, he says, "Wait, I know this really, uh, really rich guy. Really rich guy. He's a billionaire. He like owns a huge apartment um, in New Jersey or somewhere." And my dad says, so, this guy is, well, let's go and see him. And tell him about your kids, and maybe he will give some money, right? So that sounds like a good plan. And, um, and so off they went, uh, took me to this uh, guy. This guy doesn't see just everybody. That was important caveat. And... Um, so this guy, um, they told him about this young kid that the, in the 1989, just when I defected, right? I was pretty big deal. Um, I was like in newspapers, like, you know, if you guys remember, if you dig up those interviews and um, interviews and then I was on TV shows, right? The camera guys were like running after me everywhere. And I was like, I couldn't get it. Why? Yeah, because um, I didn't understand what it was such a, why it was such a big deal. But, because um, I was a kid. So, this billionaire guy learns of that. He knows, uh, he learns that this kid is here to see him. And uh, he sends his um, advertise, um, his, um, how do you call this guy? Like the agent, right? The agent who is um, like creative guy. He comes up with all sorts of ideas and plans, right? How to make money. And, um... All right, so um, so this guy came, comes to us. He gets to know, uh, you know, my dad, our new manager, me, and he realizes, like, you know, he can have a lot of fun with us because we basically <laughs> don't speak English much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and um, <coughs> and. He makes a lot of jokes. This guy was really funny. Really funny guy. Not the wise guy, but uh, really funny in his way. I remember one joke was, I was like 13 years old, right? And this guy says, Gotta, you know, we should make this huge simul where you play, where you beat the world record, right? You played all these guys and you are in the dark glasses, right? Huge dark glasses, and it says something like, gotta go, right? Gotta go, gotta go, gotta, gotta go, gotta boom, gotta bam, gotta bam, whatever, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah, so, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, just, remi just recalling that story just brings me, like, to laughs, right? Yeah, so... I had to play like 600 people to beat the world record. And my dad says like, well, don't you worry about my son mental health. He might go like crazy, right? From all that effort. And he says, yeah, but you can make a lot of money. Potentially. I guess that was one of the points, right? And so, you know, th that was the offer. And... Um, and uh, while we're thinking, well, not I'm thinking, like while my dad is thinking, because he was doing all the thinking for me, right? So while my dad was thinking, um, this guy keeps talking, he talk, he keeps talking to me, he keeps us now, he starts to ask me questions, like, Gara, do you have a girlfriend? And then he says the most craziest thing I ever heard in my life, and says, like, Gara, wouldn't you want to have this nice black girlfriend with huge 
assets. And you know, I was 13 years old. I just came from Soviet Union. I was pretty shocked with that language. Oops. And um, I, I, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> um, I just, so I did what I did best. I kept silent, right? That's, um, so that was the end of it. Um, that was the end of the story. Ooh, I'm blundering a lot of stuff. Okay, so I tell you stories and I lose uh, the game. Guess fair enough, right? Looks pretty fair. Check. Oh, I got some checks. Check. Yes, I got some checks. Rook B8. Go, Rook. Check. Uh, 95. Queen. Check. Oh, I missed Queen C2. Oh, I missed Queen C2. My god. Queen E5. Cheapos. Cheapos to rescue. No cheapos, right? Ah, all right. Good game, man. Um, I don't know, guys. <laughs> yeah, it was worth the loss, I guess. Yeah, so I was 13. And uh, I didn't know, like, uh, the sex topic in the US, like, was so much more open than in Russia. In the high school, at least, right? I mean, I go to my friend's uh, place. Remember I told you a story how I learned about this great movie? It was uh, The Lost Boys, one of my all-time favorites, right? With Keith Sutherland in the one of the main roles, right? Um, that was a fantastic movie. My God, one of the best vampire movies. And so the next morning, and I told you a story how I looked at the math, right, with that guy. And um, I realized how different uh, approaches to math, to solving math, are in Russia and in the US. Different systems completely, including the system with basically notation, right? With basic notation, was so different. Was like, wow, that was a wow moment for me. But, the Lost Boys? No. But that's not the thing. What happened? It was that the next morning, this kid takes me to his high school and uh, just to show me like um, the difference, right? So I thought, okay, let's see, I'm, I'm, I, I want to know, I'm curious, let's see it. So he brings me to the high school, uh, they take me to the principal first, right? So the principal can evaluate me like what's going on. And um, apparently it was at that moment that he got a call or he called some news local news station or something because the, the reporter some woman oh wait 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 i even remember who was the reporter it was kanye chang right i remember her name before she became uh, like um, upgraded to her uh, position right so it was kanye chang well, probably you guys don't know who that is but um you know that was uh, that was pretty big uh, important uh, person all right Anyway, so the story continues. Uh, wait a minute, I can probably grab this guy, yeah? Grab this guy and play a five, maybe even. Ooh, hmm. Anyway, okay. So, so before she came, I had about 30 minutes. And um, this kid takes me around his high school. And then, of course, the rest of the kids. I see, I meet the American kids. They're not in the uniform, which was a shocker to me. Because in Russia... In Russian high school, you had uh, uniforms, right? You had huge uniforms. Everyone wore the same stuff. I mean, in those days at least, okay? And uh, that was the first thing that surprised me. No uniforms. The second thing surprised me was the attitude, the way they basically behave in the class. No respect to a teacher most of the time. Just, you know, teacher always had to say something like pay attention, etc., etc. Um... And um, the last thing that surprised me is that the kid, like, you know, immediately turned around who, who this guy was, like, and they said, oh, we know this kid, like, he's this Russian um, chess, chess cool chess dude, right? Of course, I knew absolutely nothing how uh, football in the U.S. is a huge thing, right, in high school. So the high school footballers, right, the quarterbacks, they were like the, the it, right? They were the it, the... 
the the most popular dudes in high school. So I was very surprised. Like we went, to, you know, to see the sports, right? And um, there was this guy, this kid. Uh, he it turns out he was a quarterback, and he was like trying to be probably friendly, and he says like, "Gotta." So, how do you like American high school? So you, uh, and I said, okay. And he said, um, how do you like American girls? I have no idea, man. And you should try to have some fun with them, mildly speaking, right? PG-13 language. Which was not exactly what he said, but I'm just telling it to you. Right? That was a huge shocker to me. I was like, my god. Where, what the hell happened? Where am I? Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god, you're bad. You're bad. Okay, um, wait a minute. So what is this? What is this position? I feel like I should be winning this. Um, the black girls with big asses, yeah. Now you guys are all gonna cheese me with that story, right? Now that you you have heard it, you guys are all going to cheese me with that story, yeah? I suspect. All right, so let's grab this. Let's see what's going on. Queen f5, right? Huge threat. Queen h3. Um, wait, you just completely blundered my threat. Oh, but you have that. Okay, good. Yeah, good. All right, so um, b5. Ooh. Blindness. Just g4, g3, right? g4, g3, rook d, rook f1. Okay. So, again, this channel is for mature audience. If you are less than 16, close your ears. Because we are talking some stuff that probably is not acceptable for a minor audience. I tried to check my language, but... Um, what do you do after your chess break? You know, one of my huge um, dreams was to go on the American spring break. There is no such term anywhere in Russia. I don't believe there is such term in the Europe. Because American spring break tradition, I think is the US phenomenon. Right? Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Europeans, do you have the spring break? Uh, thing in Europe. No, there you go. Wouldn't you love to have one? That's a completely different question. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, I you better believe it. <laughs> yeah. Spring break. Mexico. All right, so um, here actually is the question. Yeah, you should take with the queen and go the, for that uh, long castle e4 move because um, now I can play knight of d7 and kick your knight out of e5 and because I actually want to take this guy now, right? So that's the reason after queen e2, knight of d7, uh, you have to calculate e4 move. So I have to. So after this game, let's briefly look at this line so I know what to do because I don't remember my analysis, obviously. I do not remember my analysis here. Ooh, bishop takes. Okay. And if I play e6, followed by knight d7. Hmm. Double pawns. I mean, your knight doesn't have the square, right? Because I can kick him out. So this is okay. This is okay for black, for sure. And now with the f4, my knight gets very nice square on f5 potentially. But first let's trade these guys. And also my knight gets a square on e4, if you're not very careful. And now we get fantastic pawn structure, guys. Fantastic. Simply fantastic. Um, yeah, that is true. All right, Capivara, man. What is your favorite opening? Because you talk too, too much girl stuff, man. 
You need to get serious. Yeah. After your chest break study and working in office. I never worked in the office. I hate working in the office, man. Cannot imagine myself working in the 9-5 job. 9-11. What is it called? 9-5? Yeah. So I'm now streaming for you guys. And this is my sort of a job. In a way. In this case... Well, king is seven first, right? Then double. A lot of weaknesses for white. Potential break pawn, pawn breaks. Um, so as I said, knight goes to c4. Before my return, I went to college first, and then I went to law school. All right. So make sure you keep the pawn. On the on that square, the idea is that you want to double pawns, then take with the knight. Knight returns, and if white takes, you undouble your pawn. That is the plan. Let's see how this plan works in reality, because reality and plans they don't go together sometimes. Thank you for the stream. You're welcome. Make Russian-speaking stream. Why? I'm an uh, I'm an American dude. I love Russia, but um, I'm still an American, okay? So, and this is for my friends Americans. Um, well, I think you're missing this knight b1 trick, I think, right? It's kind of cute, yeah? That's how you get the spawn as well. That's how you get the spawn as well. Okay. So, are you a lawyer? No, I've graduated law school, so I have a GD, but I never passed the bar because I returned to chess and uh, my first child was born on the day of my graduation. And um, I was already, and I started to sort of planning my return to chess. I played a lot of ICC. And um, I went to play some action games in the Marshall Chess Club. Right, that was um, that was my return basically. And at the end of the year, I went to play in the U.S. Championship. Even though it was December two thousand four, it was considered to be two thousand five U.S. Chess Championships with system. And it was won by the very young Nakamura, who was sixteen at the time. Um. And that is the story, ladies and gentlemen. And because I already played all these kids on ICC a lot, I played thousands of games with Naka, I played thousands of games with Grishuk, Marozevich, Aronian, right? It was the only thing was left to me is just meet them, all these guys in person. And I meet Naka, we played a lot of, uh, we played some, we didn't play a lot, but we played some Blitz during the US, Ch during the US Championship, right? And uh, that was when I realized this guy was like really, really strong, okay? So I told him he'll be in the top uh, five in the world one day. It took him a while, but um, we were competitors starting with 2000. Um, yeah, ever, ever since that moment, because I returned to chess, right? And I still played pretty good chess. I was in my prime, my 30s. I, got, I kept my rating, it was 2700. And that's why I was on the first board for the Olympic team. And Naka was only on the third board. But um, but still, you know, we that, that was huge, right? We played a lot of um, tournaments together. Played the same team for many, many years. Um, today's victory over Carlson, I think, is huge in terms of psychology. It's a huge victory. It's the first time he ever beat actually Magnus, not just in a single game, but in a match, right? So that's why it's so huge. And um, that that should have uh, unblocked, uh, if any, if there were any psychological blocks before, this match should have unblocked them for Naka. So now he should play against uh, Magnus at his full strength. Um, Benefactor... Yeah, but the benefactor is now back, guys. Come on. Don't you know? He is back. 
because uh, he has been teaching chess, right? He is uh, only chess as benefactor as well. He's teaching chess. He's doing a lot of videos. He's streaming because his wife is streaming. Yeah, his wife is um, Masha Fominech. She plays. Uh, she has a streamer channel. So if you want to know where Alexandra is, her husband, then you just go to her channel, go to her Facebook, and that's how you find uh, uh, Morozevich. They do a lot of um, pair tournaments, coverage together, a lot of um, coverage, a lot of tournaments uh, on their streams. All right. More is teaching. That is correct. More is teaching. Now you know. Glad to be of help. Okay, in this case, we just go for h4 and queen f3. The idea is to prevent knight e4. That is how I usually prevent knight e4, because it takes black some time to play that. And then... We want to play knight h5, do you? Really? Alright, g4. Let's see this. I think I am faster a little bit here because I can always castle long side, right? And I have the tempo, so in this case I probably will play g5 first, just to make sure black doesn't get that f6. And I give you this bishop. Yeah, I give you this bishop. And and c3. Maybe even c4. Hmm. Well, c3 looks okay. Alright, so I gotta be uh, careful here a little bit. I mean, this is a good position for me, obviously, but um, still have to figure out how to play this right. Hmm. Probably just castle. Probably. Yeah, I have to figure out how to unlock this attack here. It's not so easy. Huh? Didn't realize it would be so complicated. But okay, the computer will tell you this completely winning for white, of course. I mean, probably not at this particular moment, but before that. Um, come to getting world champion. He, I think Nako actually played in the candidates once. How did the longest game in my life lasted? It lasted around uh, two days, back in the Soviet Russia when we had the Germans. All right, we had the Germans. That was um, that was a long time ago. And I take with the bishop because this knight is going to f6, and after that, White's attack will be unstoppable. There is knight f6 and h6 coming. Brutal! Unstoppable! Well, probably okay, not that unstoppable, but it looks pretty brutal. So king takes, uh, knight f6 check first, grab, rook d8 check, yeah? I forgot about that. Alright, I forgot about that check. Fine. Well, I have to take on g6, man. What else there is? There is nothing else. So it's check. And I like queen e4 here. Uh, queen e4, queen h2. Hmm. I like queen e4. Taking control over all the squares and, and diagonals, yeah? All squares and diagonals. The idea also sometimes to just play rook h8 and trade and go into this winning position. Tony the man. That sounds good, man. So let's play a4. Wow, actually it's not so easy to win this. I just realized that uh, it's not so easy to win this. Not easy at all. I thought it was completely winning, but... Um, I 
Yes. Yes, Papa Tactics, I am white in the next simul. That is correct. All right. So he wants to play queen c5. Well, he doesn't really want to play it because queen b7. But I don't. It's difficult for me to find a move. So let's play rook h1. Sort of try to bring the rook back. And then, of course, we just trade the stuff. Yeah. Trying to flag me, sir. No. Okay. So basically, it was still Zugzwang, unpleasant position. Probably should have won earlier. Sincere chess channels online with a lot of trash talking. Um, all right, let's see this line again. Winning many open tournaments. Who? Who was uh, famous? Grishuk. Yipishin, of course. Don't you... Haven't you heard? I told the story about the Yipishin, guys. Come on. There was a story. Maybe not everybody heard about it. But there was this huge story, guys. I don't know how you missed it. But I did it. No. No. Wrong again. <laughs> Wrong again. Repeat the story. You all want to hear the story? It's um, it's 18 plus story. All right. Do you want to hear it? Are you sure? Um, you played him against the German Rapid Tournament. Okay. All right. Now, since you asked me nice, I will tell you the story. So, the story comes uh, from... Me, when I just started playing chess, right? So my dad says, the best thing for you to learn how to play chess is to basically play the strongest opponents. And the strongest opponents he could find, they will not play me for free, so he would offer money, he would hire masters to play me, and he would pay them money if uh, they win the game. So he I, I just barely knew how to play chess, okay? Barely. I was like absolute beginner. I was, I would say, 2000 maybe, 1900 player, okay? So, so one day he finds this um, strong master, Russian master. I would say he is playing at the... He would have become a grandmaster if he didn't commit suicide because uh, he was... Um, uh, spending so much time playing chess and studying chess and he could not make progress. He could not become a GM. He got really frustrated and he had this, uh, he had a wife and a family, but he committed suicide and uh, that was very, very unfortunate. Um, that he was very talented too. I mean, that man, Agapov, right? So, um, the story went like this. So, Agapov, strong GM, he knows books, right? So, he wouldn't tell me exactly what to do. So, after each game I lost... Um, he would say, well, it's all in the book, right? And um, your son should study books because it's theory. It's all in the book. So my dad would get really angry and he would punish me and he'd say, like, study the books. This guy says you should study the books. You're not studying. You're lazy. Okay. Um, yeah, well, that was true. But I, I, st I hated studying, especially under duress, right? Under pressure. So um, it would continue until basically so he would play spanish martial attack guys guys he was playing martial attack way before ronian way before his renaissance right this guy would play martial attack against this kid me and the literature on the martial attack was scarce i didn't know i hated the positions i was getting i didn't understand why i was getting such shitty positions with white for the mere pawn right he would get this massive attack, and I would get made it every freaking time. And then whenever I said, I don't know what to do, he said, like, look at the book. So I look at the book, and the book gives a lot of lines. The book, you guys realize what book is it? It was the age before the computers, right? So the book was Panov's, Panov's uh, opening book, right? 
<sighs> shit, to be honest. Uh, it was probably good at the time, but, you know, a lot of lines ended unclear. What the hell that means? Unclear. So I tried to play, so basically then I realized, you know what I have to do? If I played one line deep enough and I analyze it deep enough, right? If I played enough games with it that I theoretically, I should make a draw, right? So eventually that's what happened. I found the line which would basically make me a draw after losing like 30 moves in the same line, right? So, so Agapov realized what I was doing and uh, so I made a draw and then that draw was um, like this, right? So I was better, I was better in the opening and um, Agapov uh, uh, decides to take a risk and what happens is there's a position, there's a line which I see that after the end of the line we end up in the queen's, in the king's um, endgame where my king runs with, with the pawns on b3 and b4, right? And my king is on c6 and his king is on d4. So I play king b5, king c3, king a, king a4. I win the pawn and I win the endgame. But um, it is a forced line, but it is like 9 or 10 moves before that. So this guy, he offers me a draw. Agapov, yes, Agapov, the master, right. So this guy offers me a draw. And that was a huge psychological lesson that I learned that day is that sometimes that privilege of being a strong player, of having a title, is actually scary stuff, right? Uh, if he offers you a draw with a stern voice, right? You listen, right? You listen to that dude. So he offers me a draw. And I think I could not find refutation. I think I should be winning, but I'm scared, right? What if he is right? What if I look very silly, right? And it's still a draw and then I decline a draw from this mastered guy, right? And I accept it. I accept it and then my dad came home and uh, this guy told him that it's a draw. And then he asked me like, why did you accept the draw? What do you want to play? So I showed him this line. He said, yeah. He said, you're winning. So why did you accept the draw? And then my dad laughed because, uh, you know, he, he knows all that psychological tricks, of course said, okay, so it's not bad. So Agapo said after that, um, I'm not gonna play your son anymore, but I know a friend who might play your kid. Although you'll have to motivate this friend. Guess who the friend was, right? It was St. Petersburg. It was 1984, 1985, right? So Agapo brings this Yepishan guy into the picture. Correct. Yepishan was probably around uh, I don't know, 260, no, close to 300 pounds then, right? But he was young, right? Uh, he was much worse then, um, much worse. Uh, he was really overweight, really overweight, and he really looked normal. So Yepishan comes to my dad and he says, okay, you know, I don't know what a girlfriend is. I would like to know the experience. So if you help me get a girl, basically, Okay, to bed, whatever, right? You know, I'll play your son. My father looked at him and said, this will be a huge challenge, man. <laughs> <laughs> he said, this will be a challenge. And he said, all right, I'll, I, I'll take this challenge, man. I will take this challenge. So... <laughs> And he, 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 he basically, of course, he was like a GM, right? He outplayed me. It doesn't matter if it was equal position. It was not equal position. His positional understanding was far superior. He would just basically kill me in any position. I would be so freaking upset. I was scared to play this guy, right? And then my father would come uh, later. They would go out with Yepishan, right? And they 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 looking for girls, right? And uh, later that night, he will come home and he will curse this guy. Like, he'll say, like, this guy is unbelievable. Like, I introduce him to this girl, right? Yeah, we go to he, this guy's place. And I already put this girl on the bed next to this guy. All he has to do is just, you know, the rest, right? This guy has no clue. So he, my, my dad finally gave up, right? Uh, 
finally gave up, he said, okay, you win. <laughs> you don't have to play my son anymore. Unless you want to play him for money, right? And Yipishan took money so to, to beat me, all right? So that was the story. And uh, I don't think Yipishan actually um, managed uh, to get a girlfriend. But uh, many, many years later, many years later, um, both me and my dad were in some tournament in Holland. It was an open tournament. No, I was playing in some uh, round robin tournament and the Epician was in the open tournament, right? And my dad was shocked to see this guy. And uh, he was even more shocked to see he, that he has a wife. I was like, wow, this guy is married. Okay. And um, yeah. And then my dad went on, and because he had this huge ego when it comes to women, had to prove that he is the is his real macho type he did a lot of bad things um right so we're not gonna go into that but he shared with me a story of a lot of his conquests some of which i thought was very questionable but then of course um then of course you know he's my dad so i don't judge him right but um i keep a note for myself all right so that is a story about the epician so so he got married, so he got a wife. I'm not sure if he got a kid, uh, but um, he still plays chess, I think. And he's very strong still, right? He is still very strong because chess is basically his entire life. I think last time I saw him was in last year in build tournaments, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, do you remember? Do you remember? I think we saw Hippishan last year in build tournaments. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, probably, yeah. 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 All right. Um, I heard a story that was, I mean, this guy was a legend among the, in the chess circles, right? I heard, I heard a story, it was like in the, um, in the early 20s or something, that something like that happened. But I'm not going to do gossip, I don't know, all right? That I don't know. But there was a rumor that there were some, 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 some girls like that involved, for sure. Um, okay. Yes, they played in the, they had, um, okay. Eight out of eight. Ooh, yeah. So as I'm saying, he was a very strong dude, right? And he still is, because um, he was a huge talent. He was a huge talent, guys. He was a huge, um, he was, um, he was on par with Drave. He was on par with all those guys, but because he was not supported, um, and because probably of his, um, the way he's, he looked, right? He never got, got any support. So we're not uh, making fun of him, right? Actually had a huge fear of him uh, in terms of chess. The first time I actually beat him was in Spain, in some open tournament in Spain. And uh, that was the only victory that I had over him, I think. Before that, I had no victories against that guy. I don't talk to my father for the last couple of years. I had enough of uh, seeing him, okay? And um, so no talking of my father. Unless um, there is something that's worth mentioning, okay? Um, the Epician second of Carpo for a few years. Maybe, maybe. I heard something like that too. Not sure. Uh, getting mental issues. That was actually um, huge stories, yes. Quite famous too. Quite famous stories, I agree. And of course, related to the topic, um, if you remember the US Championship in 1991, that was the opening ceremony where the officials from the uh, Los Angeles area, because that's where the tournament was, right? There was this woman, I think she was the in official capacity, and she was talking so joyfully about the discovery that um, mental patients, mental people, they could play chess, right? It was like aha moment, right? It was huge. And... Um, it was like Eureka. Mental people can play chess. Great. 
Um, well, I told you the story of Agapov, right? Didn't I? Poor guy. Poor guy. All right, so b5 first. Now we can play a c4. And now you have London in action. You have everything you could possibly want from this position. The knight is on a5 to make sure there is no rook uh, taking this thing, right? Um, well, there is no rook taking that thing anyway, but um, see how passive black uh, pieces are. You might even want to take this bishop, that's fine. And you see pawns are disconnected, right? Much better position for white. These are weak pawns. It's like a far superior version of Carlsbad for white. Far superior version. All right, so how do we win this game? That is the big question, probably. So basically, we just want to double and triple on the file, I guess. That's the easiest way to go about it. You can try to put your knight somewhere, you can play knight c4, that probably should also do the trick, but I kind of like this knight on a, a5. It really destroys the spawn formation here. So let's play rook b1, and let's go rook b3 and rook c3 and just hit this guy in c7, right? Let's do that. g5, that's fine. If black wants to play f4 with his rooks here and open his king, he is more than welcome. Because the rooks are here, very passive. My rook is on the third, can switch immediately to the king side. Um, yeah. And of course, that's the whole reason why you have the knight on a5. You can play this now. And you can play rook c3 anyway. And usually she can just play... I don't know. Alright, let's bring the knight back. Let's bring this knight back. Wait, knight b4. What am I doing? Knight b4, knight a6 was much stronger, of course. Much stronger, but this is also should be winning. This should be winning as well, because you can just go g4, because your pieces are so superior in every way, right? You have this knight outpost. Black is just sort of overextended. Hugely overextended. And um, you see... That pawn formation just broke apart completely. So how do you win this? I don't know. Queen g6 looks good. And then just, you know, hit something somewhere. Hit something somewhere. Bishop g3, rook h1 looks pretty good, right? Looks pretty good. Okay. We're getting the biggest chess mental play in history. Um, self pinning moves. Um, well, G4 is a normal thing. How long do you study with Zach? Well, until he had a um, disagreement with my father about the method of teaching, right? Because uh, that was uh, against the corporal punishment. And um, he was a great man. He gave me so much joy for studying chess. He got me interested. He knew what he, what I needed. He gave me those those wonderful kid books, right? Wonderful kid ki, kids uh, chess books, the fantasies, right? Because the kid he likes uh, reading kid stuff. That's what I loved. And he, you know, he had this great approach with kids. So I'll always remember this guy very fondly. And he was the coach of also of Korshnoi, remember? Korshnoi and Spassky were his. Um, his prodigies. So, he definitely knew how to make kids interested in chess. Alright, so what is going on here? My knight on a4 sucks, right? So let's play a3. Make sure we get some squares. 
Well, we're gonna take this anyway because now we bring our knight back. Right from the rim. I hate knights on the rim. Did you tell something with Jalen, your dad? Lamp it all. God bless his soul. Yes, I played actually all. He was another very talented player who passed and committed suicide, right? I supposedly, I don't know for sure. I didn't know all that well, but supposedly that's the story. Right, something to do with his wife and something. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, guys, to be honest. But I only heard um, rumors. All right, so what is going on here? Um, hmm. I don't know. Uh, Bishop d2, maybe, yeah. Peter Swidler. The great Peter Swidler. We named the St. Petersburg after this guy. The St. Swidlerburg. It is now officially St. Swidlerburg. All right. That's what it is. You better believe it. It's official. Uh, who? Oil? Many chess players are narcissistic. Well, you gotta understand something that with chess, guys, there is a lot of insecurity, right? So how do you beat insecurity? By showing off, right? So remember that. So remember that and um, try to be understanding. Try to be understanding. Jerome. I have no idea who Jerome is. I hear about the, this guy all the time, but I didn't get to meet this guy. So this guy must be somebody absolutely bloody famous. Um, so one of these days I will learn who this Jerome guy is. And he had a stroke. Yeah, Morphe was uh, un, un, uh, it was simply unbelievable to me because, um, you know, just walk out on the World Chess Championship, right? And say, I am the strongest anyway. And, well, he is the strongest, of course, but... And then just calmly change uh, profession, right? Wasn't he who changed his profession? He just basically decided to be a clerk or something? I don't know. It's pretty impressive, to be honest. I say, like, I'm done with chess. It reminds me, you guys remember? Uh, the Highlander, right? This guy says, I'm done with the game. Huge respect. Huge respect. No, I think he was not lawyer. He was actually a clerk. Yeah, that was the... Boom! We found your mistake, Mr. Krasikov. Everything is hanging. And I have beautiful knights. I take with the queen and this knight it remains here. I know this kid. He, he played me in the Moscow Open tournament. He gave me big problems. I couldn't win the game. And then he messaged me here after many years and he said like can we play and i said sure so um 95 okay oh i am i am what am i doing I'm, i missed knight c4 completely to be honest all right, so I gotta probably take this anyway, yeah? So let's take this. Take, take, rookie six. Should be still winning, I think. But he's got good knight on c4, that's true. That is true, he's got a good knight. He's gonna try to flag me, I guess. Alright. Not bad. 
Um, in Amber Famous Tournaments, yes, I played there several times. In the 60s and the 90s, and then I played after my return in, th in 2009, I believe, right? That's where I had the magnificent match, mini match with Tapalov. I lost the first game in Sicilian because I was an idiot and I played really passively. He sacrificed the knight on a three, so I got pissed off. And in the return game, it was rapid, I played with black, I decided to play Sicilian. And I played the magnificent Khan, and I sacrificed my knight on a three as well. Right, so it was pure, it, it was perfect um, revenge. And I kicked his ass. How's your relationship with Vichy? There is no relationship with Vichy. He's a, he's a former world champion. He's a highly respected player. And that's all I can say. There is no relationship. There is no relationship with the top guys. Remember, you're all competitors, right? You can be friendly, you could be more friendly or less friendly, depends on you. But basically, it's still, it's each for his own, alright? Each for his own. So, bishop d3, c3. So, there is, um, right, okay. What do I do here? What do I do here? Um, I think I play just h5. Maybe queen c2. I think queen c2 actually. Don't remember. Yeah, there is this like some new analysis. Actually, not queen c2. Mm, small mistake. All right. I, could, I, I sometimes don't remember my own analysis because uh, so many variations, so many different things. Can't remember them all. Basically, just grab this guy. Grab this guy and play the structure, which is just always a small plus for white. And knight of three. This is always a small plus for white. The difference in the bishop is just too large, okay? It's just too large. Look at your bishop and look at his bishop. And then tell me whose bishop is better. Okay, 95. Getting ready for that f3 action. My bishop is good. <laughs> Look at this guy. Um, he says, not the London. My bishop is good. <laughs> uh, my opponent just wrote that. Um, all right. Sweden looks like a semi-psychopath. Well, sorry to disappoint you. He is not. He is extremely one of the most friendly guys I've ever seen in my life. All right. You cannot call Swidler a psychopath. Please. Do not. So, oh, we're gonna attack this guy. Oh shit, 94. Ah, but, however, I have this. Ooh, what a comeback. And now Queen h5, Bishop g6 is a huge threat. Oh, that was a trick on my part. Wow, guys. So I blundered, but it, it turned out to be a trick. Okay. I blundered, but it turned out to be a trick. Um, and now you just grab this guy, basically. Grab the knight. So you have free knight. All right. So that was a trick. Damn. <laughs> um, so you guys see this. Uh, I have to show you this, right? I'll... You, you guys see this now? Do you guys see the... Uh, damn, so lucky. So, 2100 uh, writes me, I'm very lucky. Um, okay, I guess. Um, maybe. Maybe I am lucky. I'm lucky in a lot of ways, I agree that. I will agree to that. I'm lucky in a lot of ways. But... Um, Okay. Gonna have to turn off the stream to in the future to avoid the misdirection. <laughs> yeah, I apologize for that, man. But sometimes you know, some, the grandmaster himself doesn't always know what he's doing. A lot of moves we just played based on intuition, guys. A lot of uh, intuitive moves, okay. And sometimes things just uh, connect together, right? Okay. So, next. 
Whoa, how long have I been streaming, guys? What's what's up time? Uh, for two hours and thirty-five minutes. All right, guys. So I'll play um, another half an hour, and then I'll 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 get a break because tomorrow I get two tournaments to play in. Right, and uh, they are one is on Chesscom. It involves Tatarstan. Um, the Kazan team that I play for is from there. It's best at our players, including Artemiev. He will be playing in that Blitz tournament. It's kind of unofficial Tatarstan Blitz Championship. Very competitive. Um, because, of course, I'm like a famous Tatar. Part Tatar, anyway. Yeah, everybody wants to crush me. So I'll give these kids a chance to crush me. Alright? And, um, and then I play the Unity tournament, which is every Sunday. And that will be also a flag fest, right? A lot of flagging involved. Um, well, I sure made a history first in 93, right? Uh, what happened in 93 is that we won the gold medal, the US Olympic team. It was the first, um, it was the world team uh, championship tournaments. It was not uh, Olympiad, it's different. Um, it was a round robin tournaments and I beat Kramnik for the first time who is white, and that's how I managed to draw the match. That's how I managed to draw the match, because uh, somebody lost on some board, but because of that, because we didn't, we didn't lose to Russia, that meant that um, we played well the rest of the match and we got the gold, all right? Um, Tatar, yes, you heard it right, man. Part Tatar, I just play celebrities in Russia. No, man. They used to be, but the, that 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 age is long gone. Is long gone, man. You're just a regular Joe. Anyway, you are really testing my patience by not playing a6, but because you're not playing a6, I will play this. Then I will go after your a7 pawn by doubling my rooks on the a file. And make sure your knight is getting stuck on the c8 square forever. Because I am the pawn grabber. Right? So, what do the pawn grabbers do? They activate your pieces. So, activate your pieces. Start to put them on the active spots. Rook e7. Sounds good, man. Sounds damn good. So, what are we gonna do here? I don't know. I think I have to play c4 some point, but... So let's... Why not? Okay, so let's play bishop f3 and sort of threaten that c4. Because once uh, we play c4, both our bishops will be open, right? And that means... Um... Okay, so he doesn't want to allow that c4. That makes sense. And the bishop wants to come to d3, I guess, right? So c4 doesn't, doesn't work. All right, let's go back. So that plan didn't work, you switch and you try something else. Now he fixes his own pawn structure, which is pretty good. And that means our knight gets this nice square in c6. The only question is how we're gonna get our knight there. And that will be a serious question. How do we get this knight there? So the bishop needs to be on e2. And if the knight goes to f3, then he will play f6 most likely. All right, so one of the best plays, play, pieces in black camp is bishop on f5. So let's go after this bishop. Let's go after this bishop. Let's kick his ass because he is basically um, protecting absolutely everything in a black camp. And that's how I am playing. That's how I put the knight on g4. Because knight on g4, he is looking for e5. Right? And if he plays f6, then this pawn on e6 becomes slightly weak, right? Slightly because um, not quite sure if it is that weak. But now I'm getting a pair of bishops. Now I'm pretty happy because this is a very strong pair of bishops and this is extremely great place for the bishop on f6. My god. Ah, you want to play king h6, I guess. You want to play king h6. All right. Um... Then I want to kick my bishop's ass. Hmm. Well, I have to play bishop f6 anyway. And then I have to think. Should I play b3, c4 while I can? 
or it's just an illusion well this plan is just an illusion um let's see rookie one yeah all right pair of bishops more room for the maneuvering um more room for the maneuvering bishop f1 yeah i allowed him to put these pawns here that that is not good that is not that great to be honest so bishop e5 knight e7 back hmm all right rook a1 bishop back all right this pawn on h4 starting to get on my nerves all right so let's play f4 take take bishop g5 make sure our bishop goes to e2 all right this should be better because uh, i think i'm getting to this h4 pawn somehow but um i don't know let's see the analysis board what the computer thinks about this well the computer thinks it's plus nine right plus zero nine but let's see rook g8 i wanted to play oh bishop f1 back why i understand computer evaluation to be honest so take take let's play normal chess let's just grab this stuff knight takes bishop g3 bishop e4 of course and this is um considered to be better for white but i suspect this is nothing yeah because his bishop got to e4 so that's the reason i didn't want to do that and if i play something like oh he wants to play bishop h5 right so instead of bishop f1 bishop f6 rook g8 rook e5 okay makes sense and then black is worse right because he is stuck and now okay now bishop e2 only now you play this move because bishop f3 take um rook g1 rook g6 bishop f5 grab grab take king f3 ah we sacrificed the pawn but we managed to completely ruin black pawn structure here okay but it's only 0.5 guys right so that's not that much all right um Bishop c1, bishop a3. Do you have any mentions related to Poland? No, this is closed championship. Uh, you cannot participate. It's, it's invitational tournaments. Papa Tactics, thank you for um, your donation, guys. To actually train blindfold calculation when you were younger? I won't say I trained my blindfold calculation. I just trained calculation in general. Um, right. But in, in Russia, the, the religion doesn't play a huge role, thanks, because of the Soviet Union, right? When religion was not that popular. There are places in Russia where there are people where really, really have to be careful with, right? Especially the Muslim people. But um, overall, it's, um, you know, overall, it's not that religious. Kirsan, former FIDE president. Well, he was not the worst president, I think. He was not the worst the president. I think if we compare him to Trump, that's... I mean, probably not fair to compare these presidents, but... Um, okay. Yeah, he was not the worst president. I mean, he unified the chess, right? He did unify the chess. At the expense, of course, of a lot of people, but he did. He did. He did his job. Tips on improving visualization. Solving. Studies. Solving. Positions. Right. Analyzing games. We all heard that. A lot of work. Basically, you have to do a lot of work, man. No pain, no gain. That phrase kind of sums it up. Kampa minus was the worst. No, Kampa was okay, man. I disagree with that. I kind of like Kampa. Granted, he was uh, pretty much, um, you know, 
let's be honest. Uh, he was not the most um, scrupulous character, right? Let's put it that way. But, um, you know, he was doing things, I think, that were pretty much important. Yeah, I mean, obviously, a lot of things can be said about a lot of people, but... Um, Okay, bishop f4. Why did I play this move? I'm not sure. Well, I know that I wanted to play e5 because I wanted to test the pawn structure, but um, let us see anyway. Let us use this pawn structure. Yeah, I should not have. I should not play e5 because my bishop on a4 is bad. Then yeah. Okay, so I misplayed the structure. Probably bishop b1 was better. And now you're going to do this to me. Yeah? Hmm, that makes sense. That actually makes sense, man. Yeah, I agree. I misplayed my position. Alright, so, gotta look for a draw now. You realize you're worse, so you gotta look for a draw. You have to look for a draw. I mean, there comes a point in the game when you realize you are worse, and you gotta be honest with yourself and start looking for a draw. How long can you challenge me? I'm done in about 20 minutes. Bishop d5 was bad trade. My bishop was extremely bad, man. It was just the worst bishop in history. Alright? It was just the worst bishop in history, and you just allowed me to trade this bishop. I mean, huge thank you to you, of course. You're a great gentleman, but um, you should not trade that bishop. Um... Okay, when is the show over? My show? Ooh, guys, I got a show. I got a show. I gotta got a show. What's on the show? We wanna know. What is gotta gonna show us? Um, absolutely nothing, right? I have nothing to show you guys. Um, 94. You are showing off. <laughs> yeah, there's this phrase. What a show off, right? Yeah, there's this phrase. I agree. There's that phrase. Okay, so... This knight on b4 protects the pawn. Yeah, so you got your nice knight there. I agree. You managed to get that knight there. So, what am I going to do? I don't know. Let's play g4. Let's prevent that f5 coming, first of all. And because I like my knight in e4, right? Centralized knights is something that I'm very partial to. Because they're such beautiful creatures. You guys, don't you like centralized knights? Like, that knight is like the knight. Especially if it's your knight, right? You gotta love that. Okay, king g3. Looking for that g5-0. Right. And then... Ooh, rook e6. Okay, and if I play rook d2. If I play rook d2 and h4, make sure you don't get this g5 in. Oh, I can lose on time. That is true. I didn't realize that. I didn't really realize that my time was ticking. Like tick tock, tick tock. My god, this guy is playing perfect moves. Perfect moves. Almost. Perfect moves. Almost. Grab D5, B4. Ah. Ah. 
much. Yeah, but that was probably winning endgame, yeah, I think. Probably winning. The Rook endgame was already probably winning. Um, avoid pins, yes. Do you stream for candidates and stuff? Late night with Gara. No, because I will need to invite guests then, right? We don't have guests. I, I mean, I know people that might show up, uh, but uh, come on, let's be realistic. We're here for chess. Which book about the end game? Studies. Do the studies, guys. I mentioned it. Studies are the best absolute source of your improving in the end game. And, um, of course, yeah, basically, because studies cover so many pieces, so many squares, right? The pawn formation, structures, everything. So, personally, I like to play a4 when people play a6 against me. That is my personal preference. It's also standard move in Spanish game, right? And I'm playing Spanish. Kasparian. Not bad. Kupel, Kasparian. A lot of these guys. Troitsky, right? Classics. And then you have modern uh, composers. Hmm. But now I should play E5 if you allow me. Because this pawn and this bishop, that's why I played h3, so you don't have that, right? Now this is better for white. Because this pawn against this bishop is like really bad for black. And knight, um, let's overprotect this. Let us overprotect that. So... Um, Knight a3. And because you get this nice square on d6, of course. That is also part of a benefit. Um, on the other hand, black can think about playing some crazy shit here. Like b5 at some point, yeah. So maybe knight c4 is not accurate, the most accurate move. Alright, I agree. All right, so that was not the most accurate move in history. Can I play ninety six here? Oh shit, I can't play that. Ugh. Oh, but you you just play bishop c six. Fine. That's fine. Hmm. I'll just grab this pawn. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about knight e5. I thought knight b7, knight e3 only, but he has knight d3, of course. That's the move that I missed. That is the one that I missed. I'll grab this bishop always, and then... Probably still slightly better for white. Still slightly better for white because of the pair of bishops. But not much. Not much. I'm, I'm curious what the computer evaluation of this position is. Is it like 0 0.4, 0 0.5 maybe? Yeah, no, this, this was bad for black. I'm pretty sure it was bad. But I was not in time to play knight d2, knight f1, right? If I get my knight to e4 instead of c4 or f1, g3, then black is in serious trouble. Because then I start my kingside attack and uh, all my pieces are basically looking at the black king. So, um, he'll be in trouble, but because I don't have that knight d2, because of knight f4, um, black is okay. Alright, so h4 is a standard move, right? Standard move, trying to provoke that h5, so I can get knight square and g5 and my bishop. But if he doesn't, that means h5 and then potential diagonal something. Pair of bishops, three versus two on the queen side, but it's compensated in a little way by the strong knight on d5, and that I cannot play b4, really. So, h5, g3, and um, knight f5, okay. Um, I don't know. He wants to play knight d6, probably, go for that uh, c4, something. No clue, so let's play bishop d3. Let's see what he wants. Knight d6, okay. Um, just king g2 for now. 
this should be three. Sort of trying to complete my development. Prepare b4, maybe. Which is rook t1, bishop c2. Because what you want to do here is you want to trade heavy pieces, and then when you all, uh, all heavy pieces are traded, then your pair of bishops really shine, right? That's when the bishops shine. Because right now I have no targets. Um, so d1. No targets. So he gives me the square in f5, but there's some check there, yeah? Some tactics. He wants to play e4 and f5, I guess, as well. All right, let's play bishop c1 for now. Queen d7, bishop c2. They certainly always, always grab that because this is just too strong. This is just too strong. Um, yeah, grab. And it's game over. All right, so sometimes you go passive a little bit, but then it's like step back, two step forward, right? Sort of thing. Step back, then you make two steps forward. Check, check, check. All right, so King got made it on the other flank. All right, um, would Super GMs cheat? No, they will not cheat. They have spent decades of and so much resources and money, you would not believe how much money they spent. Um, to get to where they are right now. I guess he wants subs, but he also likes good book recommendations. What is the best way to support you? Any way you can, all right? Any way you can, guys, it would be appreciated for sure. I mean, then I can stream and I can do videos, I can do play chess with you guys, I can do simuls, right? Because um, I can do something. Only because you guys are supporting me. If I get nothing from doing this at all, then I cannot do this, obviously, right? Simple as that. Okay, this should be three. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so, knight g4. To give lessons, no. Tal Baron cheated on uh, Title Tuesday. I heard about that story, but that was such a long time ago, guys, um, and I haven't witnessed it personally. I mean, did he confess, or how did he know? How 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 do they know? Because of uh, confession or something? Do you guys know? I don't know. Hmm. All right, f6 looks okay. Bring the knight back. So that's always an important question to ask. How do you come by information? Cat thrower. Thank you so much, man. 10% is cheating only? You realize it's much more than that? only those that you can catch what about those that you cannot catch thank you thank you so much mr cat thrower you have youtube video fan uh, confessing he used an engine and he got live ban on chess.com but what would have happened if he didn't confess right what would have happened if he did not confess probably some people you know sometimes they do that in order to bring attention to the problem right and um, you just had enough of all that stuff and you just give up. Because it's a common, very common problem. All right, bishop f5 looks very strong in this case. Yeah, bishop f5, knight e4, knight c5, but then knight d2. 
I don't know. This looks, you know, normally you take with a pawn because you need to these pawns go together, but because of the unfortunate location of the queen on c2, uh, I think this is good because now I can play e4 and both my bishops are looking nice, right? But bishop on g3 is not doing much. Great. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for your support. Cat thrower. Thank you. So e3 is now looking extremely pleasant. El genio del sistema Londres and tengo tantas partidas de referencia por este genio del sistema. I have no idea what you just said, man, but it looks absolutely fabulous. Okay, my wife knows what it means because she studies Spanish now. Um, all right, but I'm impressed, man. That Spanish looks absolutely wonderful. To write a book about his Dukis match. Well, why do you have to wait? Dukis can write the book now himself, right? He actually beat me like a couple of times now in the simul. Oof. But that's good. You know, a lot of GMs, they have actually supporters, sometimes even fans who help them analyze lines, right? Is cheating a common problem? Yes, it is very common problem, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it has become a major problem. Ooh. Hmm. I wanted to grab this knight, but then bishop and then realized my knight is hanging. All right, so knight e4. Not gonna even grab that pawn on b3 because the only thing that's more pleasant than grabbing a pawn is centralizing your piece. When I see centralizing piece move, it kind of takes uh, precedence over the pawn grabbing, unfortunately. Yeah, sometimes it just looks so fabulous. Uh, Vivero Elo has declined so hardly. Okay, let's not get to the little things like ratings. Let's not pay that much attention. Ratings go and ratings um, go up and they go down. It's a circle of life, man. So it's all it's all in the hips, right? Remember that movie? No. That was a Happy Gilmore. Remember, he was teaching him how to play golf, right? He could do the long shot, but that he couldn't really put the ball into the hole, which is a good analogy because for a lot of players, right? For a lot of chess players, pu putting that ball when it's close to the hole into the hole is the harder thing to do, right? And that is the actually very common problem with the chess players. Winning or converting winning position, right, is um, actually what stops a lot of people from achieving uh, the greatness. Let's, let's call it that. Uh, what do I play here? I think I play this and then bishop f oh, c6, I think. Then bishop f5, right? Yeah, Joel played this against me first. I was very impressed with this line. Joel Benjamin. I was very mucho impressed. Mucho bucho. So and now I want to play g6 actually. Um, yeah, that's how I wanted to. I, that's how I like to play my Elehine with the Fianchetto Bishop instead of e6 and playing that solid stuff. So, my Elehines are like that. On the other hand... Okay, thank god I'm not blundering anything, I think. Vera is now studying... Um, languages, guys. She is a student. She was recently accepted. If I may divulge that information, may I divulge that information that we were recently accepted to university. So wish you luck, guys, in the studies, right? Um,
Okay. Because the role of the chess player is not for everybody, just like not everybody can be a grandmaster. Correct? You all agree with that statement? Hopefully you all agree. Otherwise, I'm not gonna like you. Nah, no, just kidding. Okay. Vera means hope, you're correct. She's my angel. Vera indeed means hope. No, it means faith. It means faith? Oh yeah, yeah, it means faith actually. Hope is... Um, what is it uh, hope in Russian? Надежда. Надежда is uh, hope, yeah? But Vera means faith. Um, no, no, it means faith, which is good. Um, I mean, we, we, we all need a little bit of faith in our lives. I think. It won't hurt, for sure. Oh, you just played this move. I just wanted to play e5 and e4 and hit that knight, man. You read my mind. Okay. Um, rook d7, I guess. Hannibal! The cannibal. How's with the lockdown? Is it getting better? Well... Supposed to be locked down, but people here in St. Petersburg, they don't freaking care. They don't give a... Anything. They just behave like nothing happened. Alright. Alright, so this is gonna be the last game. And um, you guys have to let me go. After this. Okay, um, wait. So what do I do here now? I don't know. I kind of really like to play knight a8 now. Looks absolutely ridiculous, but the idea is to have... Yeah, I knew you were going to play knight e4, which is the reason I played knight a8. So now I can play knight c7. And I can try to hit this pawn somehow. So h6 first, let's try to improve my position. Because if I play knight e6, yeah, he was right, he played king e2, he protected his rook. Right, so if knight e6 d5, for example, I cannot go back and attack the pawn because the rook is protected. Now white is probably better. White is probably better, I have to agree with that assessment. It's probably most likely computer valuation as well. Um, so... King f7. You know, I'm bringing my king as well. So kind of, you know, make it a slow affair. So g5 maybe. Oh, I'm on, on time as well. Alright, so white is doing well. White is doing well. Uh, bishop f6. Uh, I like this move. I really like b4. Good move. A6, probably not the greatest move, but good job Mr. Hannibal, you killed me here in this game I guess. Alright, not bad. In the end this is a draw, because I grab your change back, right, but um, right, it doesn't matter. Uh, can you host another former US champion, uh, Jennifer Yu? Jennifer Yu, sure. Let's, um, what's your name? What's your name of the channel? Jennifer Yu, the young kid who became champion after I um, retired, I think, already, right? Um, Blitzing COVID tournaments. Oh, okay, so that's your channel, right? So, copy. So, you guys want me to raid Channel for you. All right, let's do that. Let's raid Channel for you. Thank you very much. We are off to go in... Four, three, two, one. And there we go.
boom. Twitch channel, come on. Woo. Twitch. There you go. You see inside your face. You want to ah. be a million miles away. Let's go and All find right. a nice place to lay our heads and see what everyone else sees. Let's sit and talk about how you never heard of that. Yeah, sorry, this is not the most exciting game. Because it's a bit slow, but, you know, it's rapid. 